Active AI and its use cases. Like, share and subscribe. Hello viewers, welcome back to our channel from OpenPen Innovation Labs, Bangalore. I am Divya, one of the managing partners and chief instructor of this company. Before starting the topic for this week, I would like to thank each and every of our supporters. Because of your constant support, we have gone up to 400 subscribers now. I am very excited to share this news. And recently what has been the news, especially with respect to economics? Generative AI, correct? So it is helping everybody like uh, how they can contribute towards the economy, how big corporations have made a lot of announcement regarding any kind of generative AI products or uh, platforms they are building and all. So what exactly is generative AI? We'll be seeing this week. This topic is generative AI and how it is dominating even in the space for content creation. Like, share and subscribe. Stay tuned to this channel for more exciting content. Generative AI refers to deep learning models that can generate high quality text images and other content based on the data they were trained on. Are they new? Not actually. Historically, artificial intelligence was used to interpret and recommend information. Generative AI can now assist us produce fresh content. So it relies on current technology such as large language models which train on vast quantities of text to anticipate the next word in a sentence. Generative AI can create fresh text, images, videos, and audio. The figure you see here, it is also one of the generated image. So for many years, statisticians have utilized generative models to examine numerical data. With the emergence of deep learning, they may now be applied to images, audio, and other complicated data sources. The first class of models to perform this crossover feed were variational autoencoders, which were developed in 2013. So these were the first deep learning models to be widely adopted for producing realistic visual and sound. Autoencoders encode unlabeled data into a compressed format, which is subsequently decoded back into the original form. Plain autoencoders were utilized for a number of tasks, including reconstruction of corrupted or fuzzy images. Variational autoencoders offered the important ability to not only reconstruct data, but also produce variations on the original data. So this ability to generate unique data sparked a rapid succession of new technology, ranging from generative adversarial network or GANs to diffusion models, all capable of producing increasingly realistic but fraudulent images. In this approach, variational autoencoders paved the path for today's generative AI. They are made up of encoder and decoder block, a similar design to that used to support today's huge language models. Encoders reduce a data set to a dense representation by grouping comparable data points closer together in an abstract space. Decoders use samples from this space to generate something new while retaining the data set's most significant attribute. Transformers published by Google in 2017 in a major paper titled Attention is all you need. Merge the encoder decoder architecture with a text processing method known as attention to modify how language models were trained. An encoder translate raw and annotated text into representations known as embeddings. The decoder uses these embeddings along with prior model output to anticipate each word in a phrase. Through fill in the blank guessing games, the encoder learns how words and sentences related to one another resulting in a powerful representation of language that does not require anybody to mark parts of speech or other grammatical aspect. Transformer can be pre-trained without a specific goal in mind. Once these powerful representations are understood, the models may be tailored with much less data to do specific tasks. Several breakthroughs enabled this. Transformers processed words in a sentence at all, knowing allowing text to be processed in parallel, which accelerated training. 
Earlier approaches such as recurrent neural networks and long short term memory networks process word individually. Transformer also learned the places and relationship between these words. So they made it possible to pre-train language models on large volumes of raw text by eliminating the need to define a task in advance, allowing them to increase enormously in size. Previously, humans collected and categorized data to train a single model on a specific task. Transformers allow you to train a single model on a large quantity of data and then fine tune it for many tasks using a small amount of labeled task specific data transformers have been renowned as foundation models due to their adaptability language transformer are now utilized for both non-generative and generative application such as categorization entity extraction translation summarization and question answering transformers have recently surprised the world with their ability to generate plausible dialogue articles and other content Usually, these kind of language transformer fall into three main categories. They can be encoder-only model, decoder-only model, or encoder-decoder model. When coming to encoder-only models, BERT power search engines and customer service chatbots can be taken as an example. So they are widely used for non-generative tasks such as classifying customer feedback and extracting information from long document. What we see as a chat GPT and GPT family of models, they are all trained to predict the next word without an encoded representation. They all come under decoder only models. And when we come to this uh, encoder decoder models, it is Google's text to text transfer transformer or T5. Usually it combined feature of both BERT and GPT style models. So they can do many of the generative tasks that decoder only models can do but their compact size make them faster and cheaper to tune and serve so generative ai and big language models have advanced at a design pace with new models architecture and discoveries surfacing practically daily so what are the requirements of a successful generative ai model it is quality diversity and speed So where all can we expect these kind of generative AI? If with respect to languages, it can be content creation, marketing, notes taking, genie sequence, code development, essay generation, and all. With respect to visual, it is video generation, 3D models and design, image generation. With respect to auditory, it can be music or voice generation. So after discussing in brief what are generative adversarial networks and how they are also dominating nowadays in the content space creation, we'll see a small hands-on session using Python programming language. So this program, what you are seeing here, it is an implementation of generative adversarial network using Keras library. Again, consists of two neural networks. One is a generator and the other is a discriminator and they are being simultaneously trained in this program. The, so the very first step is loading and preparing the data, which contains images of handwritten digits. The images are normalized to a range between minus one and plus one and are reshaped. Then we are defining the generator model. So this generator takes random noise as input and generates fake images here. It consists of densely connected layers, activation functions like leaky relu and batch normalization and two transport, transposed convolutional layers to upscale the image. Then we are defining what is the discriminator model, which evaluates whether an input image is real from the data set or fake, or which is generated by the generator. This also uses convolutional layers with leaky relu activation and a final dense layer with the sigmoid activation to output a probability. Then we are compiling the discriminator, which is compiled with binary cross entropy and Adam optimization has been taken here. And we are combining the generator and the discriminator into the GAN. So the discriminator is said to be non-trainable during the training of the GAN. So the GAN model takes random noise as input 
generate fake images using the generator and passes them through the discriminator. Then we are compiling the GAN, which is compiled with binary cross entropy loss and Adam optimization. Then we are going to do the training loop here. The program enters a loop for a specified number of epochs. For your reference, I have given us 300, and it can be more. In each epoch, it generates fake images using random noise and compares them with real images from the data set. The discriminator is trained to distinguish between real and fake images. The generator is trained to produce images that the discriminator cannot easily distinguish from real ones. And the print progress is seen. Every 100 epochs, the program prints the discriminator loss, discriminator accuracy, and generator loss to monitor the training progress. So to summarize this entire program, I can say this program uses a GAN to train a generator to create realistic images resembling hand written digits from the MNIST data set, while the discriminator is simultaneously trained to distinguish between real and generated images. The training in process involves a continual back and forth between the generator and discriminator to improve the quality of the generated images. So for your reference, this is how the output looks like. You see here, these are all the generated fake images then from the original data set. I have uh, come, done this program using JupyterLab. So you can use any tools for your uh, convenience, like uh, Google Collaboratory or Anaconda or uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, something like that. Uh, the code is uh, available in the GitHub, and the link is given in the description.